stars in line. I prayed for you before I called you mine. Why? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good afternoon, everyone. My dear brothers and sisters, we have come rejoicing in the house of the Lord for this celebration. My dear brothers and sisters, and now we stand before Sean and Kathleen. On the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a very important moment. With our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayers as, as brothers and sisters, let us listen attentively with them the word that God speaks to us today. Then with the Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these your servants, Sean and Kathleen, that coming together before your altar, they might be confirmed in love for one another. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it, and when the wa head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first. And then, when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana, in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat a moment. So finally, the hour has come, right? Sean and Kathleen. I said it right, right? <laughs> Good. I couldn't sleep last night, trust me. So brothers and sisters, they had been waiting for this moment. Eh? And it's a very special moment for them today. And it's a very good importance for you to be here today, to be witnesses of this historical time for them, because they will tell this story to their children in the future eh? and their families and pass it on, like we have heard the stories of our parents, you know? Love. What is love? There's different types of love, different levels, we can say, of love. I can tell you with my own story what love is. People think that priests, that we, we have never fallen in love before, you know? I was, I was not born with this cloth, you know? I was not born with the white collar. You know, originally I come from a, a family of nine children, and um, when I I was born in Guatemala, Central America, and then I grew up in California. But when I was a little boy, maybe eight years old, that was my first time I fell in love. Eight years old, there was this blonde girl, <laughs> eh, beautiful. And I was, I think, a second grade, third grade. I don't remember very well. I don't remember about school, but I remember about her. And I waited for her after school. And then I told her, can I walk you home? She said, yes. Oh, I was so happy. 
And then she took my hand when we were walking. I felt like I was walking on the clouds, you know? None of us said not even a word, not even a word. And we arrived to her, home, to her home, and then I said, okay, so goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow at school. And then she gave me a kiss in my cheek, and, my cheek. <laughs> she kissed me in my cheek, and I felt like I was in heaven. And, but then when I turned around, she went inside her home. I turned around. I didn't know my way back home. I was lost. <laughs> that was my first love. Eh? Then it came the love of teenagers, when you become kind of dumb, you know? <laughs> eh? Then it, it became more mature love. Then it comes the love that you want to give gifts, that you want to be attentive, that you want to be a, a gentleman, opening the, the door to the car, opening the door of the house. Many different types of love that we can experience. Then there is the type of love when you get married and you live in a honeymoon. But the moon finishes. There is stations of the moon, right? The faces of the moon. And when the moon goes down eh, and the honey goes out, eh, then people, they begin to show their fangs and their nails, you know? The real you. They know the real you already. They already know themselves. That's why they're here with courage, and they know where, where they're going to, you know? It's not going to be a torture, for sure, yeah. okay? Because Christ will be between you, in your family, in your lives. He will be the center of your love. There is one level, which is the ultimate level of love, Sorry, this microphone, I always fight with, with, with this microphone. It gets stuck. So to tell you this one level, the top level of love, I'm going to tell you a story. There was, there was this um, already, we can say, old couple, many years of marriage. And they used to fight a lot, like cats and dogs. Boom, boom, boom always fighting. Yeah. So one day, the wife, she decided to, to hurt him where it hurts the most of a man. And he's not there, where you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> but she decided to hurt him in her silence. When a woman doesn't speak to a man, the man goes crazy. What did I do? What did I say? And, and they begin asking, is everything okay? Hmm. You know? You should know better. Those are words maybe familiar to you guys, you know? So then the husband, he tried to get her back, giving her flowers, and she will grab the flowers without saying a word and go to the trash can and throw them there. Chocolate, she said, don't you, don't you know that I am a diabetic? <laughs> and throw it in the trash. Whatever he will do, nothing. So then one day he decided to pay her back with the same coin. He didn't spoke to her anymore. In that house, there was great silence. The children, they were very happy, you know. <laughs> Until one day, the man, the husband, meanwhile, she was taking a nap. He went inside the house, the, 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 her room, and began making a lot of noise, looking for something in the closet, Go, looking under the bed. And she woke up and she said, can you please be quiet? What are you looking for? And he said, oh, don't worry. I found it already. And she was curious to see what it was. And she said, what was it? And he said, it was your voice. 
I was looking for your voice. Now this couple, now they are 57 years of marriage, and these are my parents. I was a witness of that story. It's a real story. Eh? There is the type of love of forgiveness, to look for each other, even if you are ang uh, angry, even if you are upset, to look for each other, to ask for forgiveness, because this is the true love. The one who asks for forgiveness, even if you're in the, in the middle of your sufferings, even if you're in the middle of tribulations, of, the, of a thunderstorm in the family, either financially or with the children or with the family or going through problems, misunderstandings, but to say, you know what, to look to each other and to say, I am sorry, forgive me. And many times, my parents, they even did it in front of us. And it was good for us because when we, we knew that they were fighting. Eh? We knew because we heard everything. Even if they go to their own room, you know, we could hear everything. The walls, they speak by themselves, you know. But then at table, before dinner start, my father will say, before we start the meal, I want to ask for forgiveness to your mother. Right? And this it was a great help for, for us, the children, to not, for, for us not to be afraid of marriage, because then you have a, a bad figure of what marriage is, you know? So just remember this, always to look for each other, always to ask for forgiveness. This is the, God's level of love. I am sure you guys have gone through many different types of level of love, but this will be the ultimate one, you know? And now even better, because you will have the, the, the blessing of God between you two, inseparable, and forever. That's it, no way back, you know? And the contract is until death. Yeah? Because in heaven, then that's it. In heaven, we will have God, and you don't need mom, you don't need dad, you don't need the husband, you don't need the wife anymore in heaven. You will see each other, but you will go, God is better, you know? That's the ultimate. That's the fullness of love. And now, today, you're about to exchange your, your vows, okay? the promises of love towards each other in good times, in bad times, okay? in, in, in health, in sickness, either with money, no money, whatever situation, to say that I love you even if we go through many, many different types of tribulations, you know? The other day I was asking someone that I'm preparing for marriage, and then I said, when your wife says to you, I love you, what do you respond? And he said, I love you too. Or sometimes they say, same to you. I love you the same, or I love you more. Then I said, what about an answer to say when you answer back saying, when, when they say to you, I love you, and if you answer back by saying, and I feel loved by you, that's even more deep, isn't it? More deep, more meaningful, because that means that you feel loved by that one person, and because you feel loved by that one person, you're giving back that love. You know, it's like, I love you, square root four, something like that, you know? I'm not a good mathematician. But remember this, that you're not alone. Behind you, there is a lot of people, friends, family, everybody supporting you. There is the church here. You can always come and yell in front of me if, if it is needed, eh? so I can help you 
you know, or any priest, always to go to a priest. Okay? Now, Jesus Christ, he says here in this gospel that he, went, he was invited to this wedding. And there is two symbols here that are very important of something that I was speaking to you guys at the beginning. Uh, he says that there was no more wine, meaning honeymoon is over. Now what? They're in trouble. The first, uh, the, uh, the first day of marriage during the, the uh, reception, and they run out of wine. I can just imagine the wife saying to the, to the groom, I told you we should have ordered more wine. You know, I think they were having already the first fight right there. But Jesus Christ is like, don't worry, I caught you. Okay? And he says that they filled those jars of, I don't know how many liters it said right there, eight liters maybe, that's a lot of wine. A party without a wine, get about it. It's not a party, you know? So they fill them to the brim, it says. And Jesus, he transformed those waters into wine. It means your tribulations, your worries, your misunderstandings, your fights, everything is changed into happiness with Christ, eh? into joy. Because wine gives you joy, right? I hope. <laughs> it gives you joy, the wine, right? So he wants to transform all your, whatever you have gone through in, in your lives and whatever is obstacles will come up to transform it into wine, into new wine, the best wine. And so don't be afraid, never to be afraid because Christ will be always there in your marriage, okay? So now saying this, now I invite you to please stand up. Only them, okay? You guys remain. So now I, I, will, question, uh, I will question you guys now. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that the presence, so that in the presence of the church, all of us here, and the minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage might be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred zeal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by, by holy baptism, that they might be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of marriage life. And so, in the presence of the church, everyone here present, I ask you to state your intentions. And I ask both of you, Sean and Kathleen, have you come here to enter into marriage without co-erection, freely and with your whole heart? Yes. Are you prepared? as you follow the path of marriage, to love and to honor each other for as long as you shall both, both live? Yes. Are you prepared to accept the children lovingly from God and to raise them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Yes. So, since it is your intention to enter into this covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and look to each other. And declare your consent before God and his church. And I ask you, first, Sean. Sean, do you take Kathleen to be your wife? Do you promise to be faithful to her? in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love her and to honor her all the days of your life? Kathleen, do you take Sean to be your husband? Do you promise to be faithful to him in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love him 
and to honor him all the days of your life. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church so that God, what God has joined together, no one might put us under. Through Christ our Lord, amen. So now if if you can bring the rings, Todd, right? Just wait for me right here. Let me get the uh, holy water. Let us pray. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Kathleen, receive this ring. Receive this ring as a sign of my love. As a sign of my love and fidelity. And fidelity in the name of the Father. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Sean. Sean. Receive this ring. Please take this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we give him an applause. Okay. Congratulations. So now, if we please can stand, please stand. Now we will pray for them, for the church, and for all of us, okay, and the world. For each petition you respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and its leaders. May our commitment to the gospel lead us to a deepen our faith and trust in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for world leaders. May all people be treated with the dignity that they deserve. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our country and for those who defend it. May our men and women who serve in the military be kept safe from all harm. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for Sean and Kathleen. As they have joined together in marriage, may God be in the center of their home. We pray to the Lord. Now, if there is any married couple here, and you want to renew your vows of marriage, you can hold your hands. If you don't want to, you don't have to, okay? Let us pray for all the couple, married couples that are here today. May the Lord continue the, the, the history of love that he has begun with them in their holy matrimony. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the family of Sean and, and Kathleen, that they might be witnesses also of their love and to help them and support them in their marriage life. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all the deceased, especially our family members. May the Lord 
our, our God, in, his, in the fullness of his love, might welcome them in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us ask the Lord to listen all these prayers and the, the ones that in the, are in the depth of our hearts through intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we pray the Our Father all together and we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So everyone, if you can sit now, and then Sean and Kathleen, if you kneel. So this will be the blessing that seals everything. And that's it, okay? <laughs> There's no way back after this. <laughs> I'm raising the flag. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. Let us now humbly, brothers and sisters, invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he might favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of holy matrimony. Let us pray. O God, who by your mighty power cre created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, four men and women in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and that what what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with that one blessing, not forfeited by original sin nor washed away by the flood, Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they might remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace and love and peace abide on your daughter, Caitlin. Kathleen, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband Sean always entrust in his heart to her, so that acknowledging her in, in his equal and his joint inheritor to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in flesh. May they be blame, blameless in, their, in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witnesses to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents with lives to see their children's children, and grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope they might come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with the will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Congratulations. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the power of the sacrament we have received might find growth in these your servants, and that the, the effects of the sacrifice we have offered might be felt, might be felt by all of us. We ask you this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we can remove the chairs, please. Now you guys turn around. So this one. There you go. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it is a great honor for me to present before you Mr. and Mrs. Capolla. We're getting applause. <laughs> Until I say it. <laughs> So now, the husband, you might kiss your wife. Right. Okay. So if you guys can turn around so I can give you guys the blessing. Don't worry, now you can hold hands, you can hug, you can do whatever you want. Okay? The Lord be with you. And may the Lord Jesus, who, gr who graced the marriage of Cana by his presence, bless you and your loved ones. Amen. May he who loved the church to the end unceasingly pour his love into your hearts. Amen. May the Lord grant that bearing witness to the faith of, this of his resurrection, and you may, may await with joy the blessed hope to come. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. We give them applause. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. So now, you, right? yes, okay. okay, let us turn that way, we bow and then we go out, okay?
tonight. Now, let's bring in some special people first to say hello to Kathleen's mom, Mary Beth, and Sean's mom, Annette. Come on in, moms. And behind them, our VIPs, our maid of honor and best man, come on in, Amanda and Todd. Now remember, remember what I just said. We're gonna, we're gonna bring them in, but you gotta do me a favor. You gotta show me the love. That's why we're here tonight. It's all about the love, right? Capish? All right. Here we go. <laughs> Come on in, Mr. and Mrs. Sean and Kathleen Coppola. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have everybody dance on the dance floor to this song in his memory as well. But right now, I want everybody to raise your glass as we do a little Elvis here. And everybody, please stand and raise your glasses. When no one else can understand me, when everything I do is wrong, yeah, dance floor is open. Oh, yeah. 
And today I have the incredible privilege of being maid of honor for Kathleen, someone who holds a very special place in my heart. We have been in each other's lives for a very long time now, since we were just little girls. During our younger years, we would dress up in my parents' room wearing my mom's wedding dress and pretending to have a wedding, marrying either an NSYNC or Backstreet Boy member, always fighting over who we thought was the cutest. <laughs> but now on this day, Kathleen has her own fairy tale wedding to attend and live the rest of her life and days with someone who I would say is better, way better, than a member of the NSYNC or Backstreet Boy <laughs> member. Maybe not Elvis, <laughs> but a Backstreet, <laughs> definitely a bit boy band member. <laughs> As Kathleen starts this new chapter in her life, I have no doubt that she will bring the same dedication, love, and laughter to her marriage that she has shared with me throughout our friendship. And Sean, you are one lucky man to have her by your side, supporting you and bringing joy to her days. You have brought so much love, light, and laughter into Kathleen's life, and I will forever be grateful for that. You are an incredible person, Sean, and I am so lucky and happy you guys have found each other. You both, have a, as a couple, are what love is truly about, and I wish you both a lifetime of magic. May you have love, health, and wealth, but most importantly, may you have the time to enjoy them all. Now let's raise a glass for this beautiful couple. We love you guys so much. Congratulations! <laughs> I love you guys. I love you. <laughs> All right. All right, let me load this up here in my files. Hang on. I have to search for it. Files. <laughs> Hang on, I'm on airplane mode. <laughs> No Wi-Fi here yet. <laughs> Private search. Blink. All right. Hang on. Thank you for your patience. All right. I told Sean I needed more alcohol for that. I didn't expect it to come so soon. All right. I thought it was going to be for dessert. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm ready. My cousin Sean, you come to me on the day of my cousin's wedding and you ask me to stand before you and talk, to talk about the past, the present, possibly the future. But not once, not once have you invited me into your own home and offered me a creme brulee, a cannoli, or the rare and infamously endangered panoli cookie. But I stand here before you all ready to do immature imitations because I've had one too many glasses of fine red wine. 1990s Lynnhurst. I'm a little kid playing with Ninja Turtles when I find out I have a new cousin that isn't a female. I'm intrigued, excited, and still learning how to use the potty. Sean was small, eager, and had cheeks as red as Nan's Sunday sauce. We would spend hours in the yard just because we hated being inside. We were like outdoor dogs, willing to climb any cement wall, chain link fence, 
or actually even pretend we were dogs by using our actual dogs' names outside, which eventually became our street names. I was Captain Cody, and he was Killer Kiko. <laughs> Hendel Ave, North Darlington, was where we would spend most of our times blessedly devouring sandwiches loaded with chicken and peppers, cold cuts, mayo and mustard, eggplants, and chicken marsala. By the way, those chicken marsala sliders were delicious. Coolers full of soda and juices. It doesn't matter how little you are in an Italian family because you'll be big enough real soon. Playing basketball or cannonball into the pool was what we loved to do. We'd sneak into the big screen tent for cake and a Big Nan kiss. The screen tent was like Big Nan's sacred Buddha temple. Free of mosquitoes and sun, but full of love and sugar. Uncle George, Sean's grandfather, would always be standing nearby with his white tucked in t-shirt and jeans, something Mets baseball related, and of course his ubiquitously flawless Elvis Presley center hair roll that looked like a perfect silver Cinnabon. <laughs> Sideburns as thick as carpet, tinted prescription eyeglasses that looked like he was ready for a shooting range at any moment. He'd be taking cold beers out of the fridge, <laughs> snapping tops and handing them off. To be around him was to feel happy. His attitude, his mannerisms, they were contagious. He was my godfather. And Lou, on the other hand, Sean's grandmother, would have you pissing in your pants with laughter. I have never met a more naturally hilarious person in my entire life. The infamous, oh yeah, could be heard <laughs> across any room at any family event from miles away. You cannot imitate an Aunt Lou recollection or story if you wanted to save your life. They're unique to her and her swagger, an endless pool of affection. Something in the genes of her and my nan, those hugs and those I love you babe goodbyes, they just hit different. At one family dinner, she got everybody laughing so hard she couldn't contain the chuckles herself, and she fell off her chair and rolled into a partition wall, knocking it off the track, casually rolling into the wedding party next door. I think we fused parties that night. She was showtime unstoppable. Having that energy to start off with in life definitely molded Sean into quite a unique character himself. Nikki would show him a calculated, artistic way of looking at things. And his brother George, who heaven was lucky to get early, would show a strong and warm kindness towards life. His older sister Renee, much like my older sister, would be a lifelong soundboard. I found out why siblings fight so much. Genetically, siblings are 50% identical. You're literally fighting with the other half of yourself. But it's all love. I gotta save the best for last, Annette. If she isn't the coolest, nicest, most understanding, but principled mother, I don't know who is. In the time today where most kids are on their phones or attached to a screen, back then, me and Sean, most kids, we used to go out and we used to come back whenever, you, you know, live. With no directions, no answers, back when beepers and payphones were a thing. Sean and me would go bike riding, go to the field by Ridge Road, grab a Rita's ice, go shoot hoops, or just pick grass and sit on a ledge down the block and talk to shit. Annette would say, go with your cousin, you guys stay together, be careful. <laughs> Don't get into no trouble. Annette was always there for us if we needed her. Did you eat? Are you hungry? You thirsty? You need a ride anywhere? <laughs> a real mom. If I ever slept over, she'd have fresh bagels with cream cheese and hot coffee dripping in the pot. And then she'd go off to work because she worked her butt off. You know that 1943 We Can Do It woman? With the polka dot bandana? Making a muscle, that's a net. She can do it. The man who gave my cousin his last name, again, bending the bars of heaven's gates too soon. I know he was happy to have had his son. He loved him, taught him to be strong-minded, tough-headed, gabados. Louis Coppola stood maybe five foot eight, but he was 58 inches across. A strong ox of a man who smoked a cigarette like James Dean and talked like he forever had laryngitis. Sean, go get Renee. Sean, if you don't clean up Kiko's poop, he's going. <laughs> One time, he showed Sean and I how to do some yo-yo tricks in the kitchen. Don't ask me how Louie knew how to do America's Got Talent level yo-yo tricks. But that evening, I watched this man with knuckles as thick as firewood blazingly perform Walk the Dog over the falls, around the world, rock the baby, and a fast wind-up on both a brain and a butterfly yo-yo. You think you know people? You don't. Sean and me got older, eventually outgrowing Pokemon cards. He spoke of this one girl he really liked, and that mutually liked him. It was wintertime when I met her, like 
when you go outside and you smoke a cigarette and your fingers burn because it's negative 10 degrees with 20 mile an hour winds. Painfully cold New Jersey February day. Talking like Jack on the Doran Titanic, cold kind of day. My cousin pulled up in the street and she was sitting in the passenger seat smiling. Her hair looked so shiny, like it was just conditioned. Her eyes were Her eyes were kind of squinty. I could see a little water in them, like, like maybe Sean left the windows down on Route 80. <laughs> Sean gets out and smiles at me. We grabbed each other in a nice big hug. No sooner than later, his girl comes flying over the driver's seat, beautiful necklace around her neck, almost knocks me on the ground and starts licking my nostrils. I bit her cheeks to reciprocate the love. I'm like, bro, she's solid. He goes, this is Brandy. When Kathleen got out of the car, <laughs> the first thing that went through my mind was how big my cousin was getting. Seeing him with a beautiful girlfriend, a dog, I think he just got off work. He looked genuinely happy and excited, as did she. I noticed how they laughed and they vibed off one another so floetically. They finished each other's sentences and she had the toughness to cop the pola out of them. It was absolutely beautiful. As times uncontrollably change and being social means texting and family visits occur seldomly, it's these moments that are most remembered. In the ride of life, who we meet and fall in love with is an additional dynamic or layer to all of our lives, our history. This wedding is a celebratory gathering of Sean's family and Kathleen's family, now one family. Sean, my first baby boy cousin, I wish you a lifetime of love, the next 65 years of good health, I wish for you even on the days where you don't know why or what it is you're doing to be happy. Just be happy. You look back on this day when you're a toothless old man looking like Junior in Sopranos. <laughs> like the memory of Jack and Rose in Titanic when they meet at the stairs looking as good as you two look right now. You'll think, that was a good ass night. I'm proud of you and I love you very much. Kathleen, I wish you calmness. I wish you aching belly, cheeks, and sore ribs from laughter, and I wish you peace of mind in knowing that this Italian stallion will protect you, take care of you, and he will love you to the end of his days, or until you stop making him meatballs. <laughs> Welcome to your life as a Coppola. Buenvenuto en familia. <laughs>
Looks good. Look up. Yeah. Oh.
your pants too. I need something bigger to take your pants too.
Oh, the name. 
to change the pace a little bit. Nice set. I like to get something out for my man a little. Look at what we're doing.
Vamos lá, pessoal.